So in this lecture, we are going to discuss about uh, repeated limits. So we are going to take three to four problems on repeated limits, so that the concept will be very clear. So now this is a function. The function is x square minus y square upon x square plus y square, whenever x and y are not zero. Because if x and y are zero, the denominator will become zero. That's why I am using this function f as a fraction here. If only x and y are not equal to zero, zero. But if x and y are zero, zero, then what is the function I am going to define? The function is defined as zero. So uh, now here, so let me just see what is f of zero, zero from the definition. From definition f of zero, zero. So at x i zero, zero, the value of the function is how much? It is given as to be equal to zero, right? So here it is given to be zero. Okay. If it is one here, then f of zero zero will become one. This is the way it is. And if x and y are not equal to zero, suppose I ask you what is f of one comma two, then your answer should be see x and y are not zero. So in that case, I will use this part of the function. Means it will be one square minus two square upon one square plus two square, and whatever this fraction comes out, that that will be my answer of the fun of the value. At one comma two. Anyway, this is not our question. Now, what we want to solve is we want to find the repeated limits. So, let me first find limit x tending to zero, then limit y tending to zero. So, these are repeated limits as I discussed in my previous class, which is equal to f of x comma y. Okay, which is equal to limit x tending to zero of limit y tending to zero of the function. The function is x square minus y square upon x square plus y square, which is equal to limit x tending to zero, y tending to zero. So I have just to evaluate y equal to zero over here. So what will remain if I put y equal to zero? I will be left with x square minus zero upon x square plus zero because I am putting just y equal to zero. So it will be this, but this x square and x square. Now don't write it as zero upon zero directly. Okay, first simplify it and then substitute x. So what is x square and x square will get cancelled, and this will be just limit of one. And what is the limit of one? There is no x inside this limit, so this will be how much? This will be directly one. Now on the other hand, what we will do is now we will change this order. So we will make this as y tending to zero, and then I will take x tending to zero. So what will be the change in the answer? So now when I put x equal to zero here, what will happen in the inside limit? I am not worrying about the outside limit y. So keep this away. So limit y tending to zero is as it is. And what will I get? I just put x equal to zero quickly here. So you get minus y square upon zero square plus y square. So that will just y square. Don't directly put y equal to zero. It will become zero upon zero. So cancel it. So when I cancel it, I will get limit of y tending to zero. And what is inside? It is only minus one. So what is the limit of minus one? There is no y here. So what is the answer for this question? The answer for this question is this. so the previous answer with limit x y tending to zero inside and x tending to zero that limit came to be one. That came to be plus one. And now it is coming to be what? Now it is coming to be minus one. So we have observed that repeated limit for these functions is what is different, right? So repeated limit are different. It can happen. I told you in the previous class that repeated limits may be different from each other. Repeated limits exist. They do exist. The first answer was one. The second answer was minus one. So they exist, but not the, but not same. This can happen, right? So now when you look at this problem here, f of x y is x square minus x square y square upon x raised to four y raised to four minus x square y square when x and y are not equal to zero. zero. What will happen if x and y are zero zero? You cannot directly put zero zero here because it will be zero upon zero. So for that, what we have defined is we have defined the function is equal to how much zero zero. So from this part, I know that f of zero zero is equal to how much is defined? It is defined as zero, right? And if you ask me, so if you ask me something about say f of one comma one, I will put everywhere x x and y x x one and y one, and I will get some answer, right? So this is how the function is defined. Now let us try to find the repeated limits. Limit x tending to zero, limit y tending to zero. So we are finding the repeated limits of the function x square y square upon x raised to four plus y raised to four minus x square 
y square. I told you what you have to do in the first inside part of the limit, as in the previous problem, we will directly put y equal to zero wherever you see y equal to zero. Y put just zero there. So what will happen to the the denominator? It will become x raised to four plus this will become zero because it is y raised to four. Here also y is there, so this will become also become zero. So the so the denominator is just x raised to four upon x raised to four, right? And what is the numerator? Let's put a, put y equal to zero in the numerator. So you get x square into zero, right? So means the numerator itself is what? The numerator itself it itself is zero. So what will be the fraction? Zero upon something. So that will become zero only, right? So limit extending to zero as it is, right? And this will become what? The numerator is zero and denominator is something. So the overall fraction is becoming zero. So what is the limit of zero as x tends to zero? There is no inside. There is no x inside. So this limit will be coming to be almost zero. What will happen to the other limit in the case? So I will take limit y tending to zero and limit x tending to zero of the same function x square y square upon x raised to four plus y raised to four. Minus x square y square. Now directly put here x equal to zero. When I do that, so limit y tending to zero outside. I'm going to write as it is. Inside wherever there is x, I'm just going to put a zero. So the denominator now will become zero, and this term will also become zero, and I'm just left with what y is to four. What about the numerator? The numerator itself is becoming zero. So this fraction will become what? Otherwise, what students do is they tend uh, they see that y tending to zero and I have y is to four, so we will get zero upon zero. No, that's not correct. First, simplify it. So this is y tending to zero, and what is the answer of this simplification? Zero upon anything is will become zero. So that will again become zero. So you see, the first limit, repeated limit, is also zero. The second repeated limit is also zero. So sometimes the repeated limits also may come. To be equal, sometimes they are not equal by this problem. Let me take one more problem on repeated limits. Okay, now we have a slightly complicated problem, and again I am supposed to find the repeated limits for this also. So it is y plus x sine y sine of one upon y, where y is not zero. So if y is not equal to zero, you are going to write this. But if y becomes zero, then you are going to write what? You are simply going to write zero. Okay, and we will find the repeated limits at zero zero. So let me write the first limit is limit say x tending to zero, and then I will say limit y tending to zero of the given function. The given function is f of x y, and uh, this is limit x tending to zero, limit y tending to zero of the given function y plus x into sine. One upon y. Okay. Now, as I told you, this outer limit, limit x tending to zero, will be kept as it is. We will go inside, inside the bracket. That limit we are going to evaluate. So, what is the limit of y tending to zero for this particular term? That is going to be zero plus x into. What is the limit of y tending to zero sine one upon y? So, let me write it. Limit x, limit of y. Tending to zero of sine one upon y, right? And you know that this, if y tends to zero, this will be not undefined, and therefore this limit in the first year course we have done that this limit sine of one upon y that does not exist, correct? So up to zero plus x, everything is fine. Only this part is a problematic function, right? Problematic thing. So that limit, what? That limit does not. Exist. If that limit does not exist, means this entire thing, this entire limit, I cannot find because there is a problem in a small component over there, and therefore this limit, what this limit does not exist. So one repeated limit I got when I calculated in this fashion, then I got that the limit does not exist. Now if I change the order, if I change the rows of x and y. Then what will happen? Will that limit exist or not exist? So limit y tending to zero. Here I have limit x tending to zero. And now I will start taking from this part. So so here I have limit y tending to zero. And here now I am going to put what? Here I am going to put wherever there is x. There I am going. There I am going to put zero. What will happen to this y? That will not change because there is no x plus. X tending to zero, so I can directly put x equal to zero here. 
here this is sin 1 upon y there is no x so that will be 0 into sin 1 upon y but again I know 0 into sin upon 1 upon y will again become 0 so I have just y plus 0 means I have just y inside now I can evaluate this limit what is the limit of y tending to 0 of y that limit is equal to 0 so this type of limit when I change the roles of x and y one of the limits come, is coming to the 0 means it exists right and when I change the order when I take x0 and y0 then what happens the limit does not exist so simultaneous limit sometimes it may happen that one limit will exist one type of repeated limit sorry not simultaneous repeated repeated limit some part will exist one of the part may exist and one of the part may not exist so this happens so this is that example to show that sometimes first repeated limit exists but the second repeated limit does not exist i hope the concept of repeated limits is now clear to us in the next classes we will study about simultaneous limits and how simultaneous limits and repeated limits are related to each other that also we will see